wanted to introduce Terry. He is our speaker today. Terry Gleason is a Special Projects Manager in the North Orange County Community College District, which is in Orange County, California. In this capacity, he manages the Distance Education Office at Fullerton College. Information services on the Anaheim campus in North Orange County Community College District and is currently hosting Blackboard Learn 9.1 for Fullerton. Terry Gleason is proud to be part of the California Education Technology Collaborative, which is CETC, and is involved in ongoing projects in audio, video, streaming, instructional web creation, and Blackboard Learn 9.1 administration. So we are glad to have him here. And he's just generally a nice guy, and you're going to enjoy the next hour. All right, Terry. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you, all, everyone, for coming to my webinar. It looks like we have a wide range of uh, uh, skill levels uh, in terms of who are who might be uh, already developing for um, wireless access, whether it's for a phone or a tablet. So, but I'd like to start out with asking everyone a question: How many people are already publishing to phones or tablets? Can you use your green uh, uh, quest or mark and tell just just let's all share about how many people are already developing or publishing their content their class content on their phone. So it looks like we got a couple people going in. Okay, so um, I wanted to start out with something a little bit simpler. I'm going to my uh, first slide here. Uh, first of all, instructors may not realize that students are using their phones to re review class material and uh, prepare for tests. And with that in mind, uh, students are busy. Students have uh, lives outside of college. They may be looking at your test material while they're standing in line at the supermarket. They might be uh, at the gym. And uh, if you can provide access to them, even if they're not in the school mode, that, that is going to help them to uh, stay up with material and do better in your class. So with that in mind, I kind of think in terms of uh, publishing to phones. But that doesn't mean that uh, an instructor is not going to go look at the material that they published on a tablet. So uh, we're also going to be talking in terms of tablets. Um, instructors need a method where they are going to use existing class materials and publish those materials to phones or pads. Now, what's, what's the significance of this? I, I was just in a meeting this morning uh, about Blackboard where we were discussing that Blackboard is uh, able to detect the kind of device that a student or instructor, i.e., a user, is uh, accessing with and then would reformat the materials to fit on that device. But if you're an instructor like me where you are uh, publishing a public-facing website and you want your students to be able to use it on any kind of device, uh, including BlackBerry, that's what I published to, then um, you, you are going to have to take in some additional consideration. Uh, it's not just put it up there and then have the system figure it out. You're, you're also going to have to contribute to that figuring it out part. New class materials, on the other hand, if you put them in Blackboard or if you uh, create them for public facing websites in Dreamweaver, then uh, they, they can be crea uh, created in such a way that uh, it will, they will be easy to see on a phone or a tablet. So we're going to be thinking in terms of uh, legacy materials and also new class materials. Um, kind of an underlying theme that goes through this whole uh, webinar is single column pages. Now, single column uh, not is not only simple. So, in my way of thinking, that's good to keep it simple for students. Because remember, your students may not be in the school mode; they may be in the uh, "I'm doing something else" mode. And uh, you want the material to be simple and easy to read, so that they're getting that transfer while they're doing whatever they're doing. Hopefully. And this is the intention of my presentation, is to be able to show the students some 
uh, materials on the phone, and then they can go back to their uh, tablet or laptop or maybe even a desktop if they're in the library at school and look on uh, look at the material using those systems and see the same material and then remember that they've already seen it one time. Um, if you're uh, accessing with a phone right now, um, you can uh, go to this link that I set up and it's on twitter.com. So I set up I have a Twitter feed and the first top the first top files, they were all submitted or tweeted on March 16th. Those files have, or those tweets have links uh, that uh, you can use to look at my, uh, the files that I'm talking about during my presentation. So right now, this uh, bit.ly address is on uh, file, or tweet number five, if you're, if you're going to my uh, Twitter feed. Um, okay, the way this Francine said, there's a, there's a in the URL, oh, a dot in the URL. Yes, that's right, there, there's a dot in the URL. That's right, and if you go to uh, Twitter, you can see that as well. Oh, I see, what you, um, I see, great. So uh, there was a, an earlier, there was a dot left out, so that's working. Okay, everybody, if, if you have a uh, tweet or uh, text if you have more questions about that. Um, accessible static pages. Now, some people are going to look at this and they're going to say, wait a minute, static pages, what do you mean uh, by uh, putting up a static page today? But uh, static pages is exactly what I mean because I want that class content, content to load the student phones quickly and be simple and work on the greatest number of screens. So, my first bullet here is create class content that renders to small screens and is easy to read. Um, you'll see that um, you're going to create uh, a page that goes to a phone and it's going to be too much on the page and it's not going to be easy to read. If you're on an Android or if you're on an iPhone where you can use either portrait or landscape, then uh, you can turn your phone or you can do a gesture to make the the material uh, smaller or larger, and uh, your and your students are going to be able to use your content. If you're on a BlackBerry, then you're you're going to use your QWERTY keypad, and uh, you have a couple of different ranges that you can uh, change your materials to. But it's it's kind of in steps; it's not continuous. So as a result, uh, you might want to. Uh, think in terms of not putting too much material on on every individual screen. Um, a simple static page is black text on a white background. I'm thinking a little bit in terms of ADA compliance here. Uh, so maximum contrast. Uh, it's easy to see and, and read. So um, now, now in terms of using Dreamweaver, I also realize that we're in a situation with California Community Colleges. Everybody may not ha be up to Dreamweaver 5 or uh, even better, Dreamweaver CS 5.5. Some people might be on uh, CS 3, 4, or maybe you have 5, but not 5.5. I, I know there's, on our campus, there's instructors using Dreamweaver 8. Uh, so I wanted to put my presentation together so uh, you could use any version of Dreamweaver. And if you've used Dreamweaver before, then you know that um, while it may not be recommended that you go back to, all the way back to Dreamweaver MX 2004, you can still use it if you're in a jam, if that happens to be on your laptop or on your desktop at home and that's the only thing you have to work with. You can still create pages that publish on, on student phones uh, using any of the versions of Dreamweaver. So that's why I didn't put a, a Dreamweaver uh, code after that third bullet there. Static pages that render the phones can also be used on pads. Now, part of that is um, that you can do gestures on your pads to uh, change the way the page looks. But also, uh, you, um, one of the things that I realized was if I put a, uh, an HTML page out there, uh, which is just uh, headers and lists, so if you go to your Dreamweaver design view, and you're, you're going to be putting in an H tag and then uh, an unordered list tag. If you just use headers and lists, then uh, 
those that page, the page you create, is going to render correctly on all, all, all your different devices. And the headers and list is a recommendation from High Tech Center Training Unit, where it's the simplest, most straightforward way of uh, being ADA compliant. So, going to my next slide. You don't need complicated styles, and of course, right now we're not we're talking about uh, no styles at all. So just putting an HTML page out there and uh, just having it be black and white and get your point across is the is the first best way of um, getting uh, information to the students that they can use on any one of their devices. Notice that I didn't put a version for HTML, whether it's uh, four dot. Uh, one or it's uh, whether you're you're already uh, designing pages in HTML.5. It really at this point won't matter. H XHTML. Uh, you can use XHTML, and uh, you're not going to be the latest and the greatest, but you can still get the content out to your uh, students. And then here I am. I've got. I'm repeating here. You can do this with any Dreamweaver version. I guess I should say you could do this with another HTML editor, but I tend to use Dreamweaver. And later, um, as some people already know with Dreamweaver CS, CS 5.5, there's tools in Dreamweaver CS 5.5, we'll talk about them later, where um, you can uh, just use your Dreamweaver uh, design view and create uh, more complex, not the simplest by any means, uh, pages for your students. Um, uh, my third bullet, simply create your class materials using headers and lists, and you can see HTML generated in your page by using Dreamweaver code view. If you're not familiar with Dreamweaver, there's split des uh, design and code uh, view buttons. So either you're going to be writing, uh, by, writing the code by hand, or you're going to be using the uh, graphical user interface to create your headers and lists for your page. And then you can see an example, uh, and here's my bit.ly address again if you're not there. This, uh, I like this. Uh, it's, it's a syllabus that I put on uh, to a public facing web server, and, uh, and I tweeted a, uh, this address. And I like it because it's got too much on it, but whether or not you're using a Blackberry, an Android, or um, an iPhone or you're on a pad, you can use gestures and that uh, page design will work. Notice down at the bottom of my page, um, let me see, I'm going to check uh, with you guys. The bottom of my page, I think I still have it set for CSS, but there's no CSS uh, here. And uh, I did run it on Cynthia to make sure that it would uh, test drive and be uh, usable for all your different students. So kind of like the, the, one, uh, the one file that everyone can use concept. Uh, next slide. What about browsers? Now here's something that we discuss all the time. And uh, it's, uh, it's not, not something that everyone is familiar with. But let's talk about browsers for a second. First of all, right now, if we're using our desktops or our laptops, we, we have about five different browsers. Uh, Chrome from Google, uh, Firefox from Mozilla, Internet Explorer from Microsoft, of course, Safari from Apple, and Opera is its own uh, browser out there. It's a great browser. I have, Afro, Af pardon me, I have Opera Mobile on my BlackBerry. And uh, if I get it in a jam with my uh, default uh, BlackBerry browser that ships with the device, I'll go to uh, the mobile version for Opera, and, and that usually fixes my problem. But what I'm thinking about right now, and what I'm telling people, is that even though we have all these different browsers, as instructors, we can design pages for either Android or iPhone browsers. And I didn't put it in here, but those are WebKit browsers. So this is we have an opportunity, even though we're in a a, a, an environment where there's lots and lots of browsers to deal with, and five is too many probably. We, we also have the opportunity to design for WebKit browsers, and this is, a, this is the first time in a lot of years that we've been able to target uh, one uh, technology or two browsers that use the same technology. And it's going to be 
easier later for us to create uh, new pages quickly for our students. Uh, there are more browsers for wireless access. And this is something that people tell me all the time, is that, well, if you think that you've got problems right now with five different browsers on your desktop or on your laptop and doing all these different course management systems, it's even going to get more complex uh, when we're uh, talking about the browsers that ship uh, with it, all the different phones that students are going to have. But I think, and I'll say this again, I think most, most students are going to come to campus either with an iPhone or an Android. And still, some students are using Blackberries, but um, I think it's less and less. I mean, I, I know that if I walk through the quad here at Fullerton College, I don't see a lot of people on uh, tablets. But I do see lots and lots of students on a wide variety of phones. Not all those students have browsers. Of course, if they're not, if they're not browsing on their phone, then they're not going to be looking at your pages. But um, they, uh, they, can, uh, they might look at somebody else's uh, iPhone or Android or Blackberry and see your pages on that device. The solution, and uh, this is, I say this all through my workshop, is use simple pages for class materials. You'll get the information there. And uh, the other thing that goes along with simple is single column web page designs work well. And you're look, you, if you browse to my page, you can see that my page is a single column. We'll also get to a web page design that's a single column, and that will also work on my BlackBerry. OK, so I'm going to go to my next slide. Single column web pages. So <clears throat> here we are. I'm, I'm actually going to. Uh, I went out on the internet and got a free web page that was a single column. And then in a couple of steps, um, I was able to make that um, single page website on the internet for free. And a couple of steps, I was able to make it uh, published to my BlackBerry. So why do I make a point out of that? Because Instructors are busy. And what we don't want to do is create a, a situation where instructors are uh, you know, adding 25% more work to what they already, their plate that's already overflowing. So I want it to be something where, in a couple of steps, they can make it and uh, uh, send it out to their students. Students like it if it's new. Students like it if it seems like the instructor is participating and the instructor is uh, going the extra mile to create something new for them to learn with. So we want it to be something that you can do easily. But, uh, and, w and we want it to be simple so that students can see it on their phone. You don't want to put a page on, on the internet and then tweet it or uh, otherwise have some way for students to access it and then get 25 emails to answer. You don't want that. OK, here's another issue with, um, with web pages is single columns prevent your content from overlap. Now, what does, what does that mean? If you set up a page, say, two or three column, columns wide, and you look it on, on your desktop, it's going to look fine. But then if you squeeze down that window uh, to a phone, and uh, even smaller to a BlackBerry, then um, you can have your content get all crunched together. And so that's one of the reasons why I talk uh, or, and refer over and over to single columns. You, it, it, when we go to a web page, you don't have to uh, only have a single page that loads. You could also have a um, horizontal menu that loads across the top of the single column, but it's still a single column. So you could load uh, a page, an index page, or a home page, or a default page, where you can send your uh, students to other pages from that page and not have to use a left-hand side or right-hand side navigation bar. What you're trying to do is stay away from the, the idea that the student has a screen that's so small that your content overlaps, and then it looks like it doesn't work, and then uh, your student clicks you off. Uh, for instructors that want to go the next step, horizontal menus can also be incorporated into single column design. So you'll see in my, um, I think, I think I'm going to have to I go a couple of um, screens here before you see another link. Uh, you could go up uh, on 
on twitter.forward.carygleason, you can go up one more uh, tweet, and there's a new address. It's uh, Y12A2M if you're looking at my Twitter feed. If you design for a phone, m most of the same designs will work on a pad. I think so far, uh, somebody's going to prove me wrong, but so far, the designs that I've put out there, they've worked on a phone, and I designed for a phone, and then uh, they work on a pad. And it's going to start maybe not looking exactly right if you go all the way to a laptop. It'll look like it's from 20 years ago, but um, you start with your phone and then uh, work up. Now, remember now, I'm thinking about a public-facing website that is, uh, does not detect the device that the student or other user is using. So that website does not know what device you're using, so it's not going to reformat the page for you. Uh, Blackboard, maybe, if you're using Blackboard. Uh, or some other content management system, maybe. But um, for the content that we're creating as instructors on the go, uh, you're, you're, you're going to have to create pages that work on a lot of different devices and have one version and uh, not make up a bunch of stuff. Although, thank you for Francine for uh, mentioning that uh, she's looking at multiple views in Dreamweaver CS 5.5. That's great, and we, we are definitely going to get there. Um, third bullet, many students are going to arrive at community college with an iPhone or Android. I'm, I'm repeating myself, but it's worth uh, it's worth mentioning that um, don't forget you're going to have students out there that don't have a browser on their phone. They may be carrying the phone. They may have the phone with them in class. They may be using their phone in class, but they, they could be using their phone to just send uh, SMS messaging or text. So um, some people are not going to have phones, and there's not much you can do about those people. Um, if they don't have a browser on their phone, they're going to have to use somebody else's or they're going to have to go to the library or to the student lab or wait until they get home and or can go out and open up their laptop. As instructors, we are sharing class materials, not creating web art. Now, some people are going to murder me for that one uh, because we have instructors in the class who are creating uh, content at the level of web art. but. Uh, that's not uh, uh, where we're at right now for the vast majority of uh, instructors. So we're just going to create something simple, and our pages are going to be very, very functional. Next slide. There's. Uh, I'm not recommending that everybody key in that address and go to that um, website, but you can key it in if you like, and you can browse to that website, and you'll see on my single column liquid layout. So that's my single column website that changes the width and uh, may also change the uh, size of the font depending upon the screen size. That is uh, where I started. And this, uh, this maxdesign.com, this is a uh, page that you can go out and get the code, get the styling, put it on your, uh, use, put it in Dreamweaver, and then upload it to your website. and um, you'll see uh, that um, you not only have a design that will work uh, for your class, but you'll also have a design that is easy to change so that you can use it for phones or tablets. And so um, one of the things you can do on that uh, design is that you can get rid of the horizontal menu. I did that, and I tweeted that page. Or you can get rid of one of the links on the horizontal menu and keep your horizontal menu that have it fit on a real narrow screen. Free liquid layouts on the web will get you started with the next level of sophistication. That level of sophistication is HTML and CSS. If you're just starting out, you're not you're you're thinking about buying a phone and you haven't even started thinking about uh, publish your, your content to phones, then uh, you may not be uh, uh, real comfortable with uh, hypertext markup language, that's uh, HTML, and cascading style sheets, that's CSS. It's, uh, it's not something that you have to use, but it is something that is there, and you can use it in Dreamweaver, and Dreamweaver is a great editor for uh, creating pages that way. So. Uh, just keep it in mind. 
if you want to you want to uh, just use pages that have been created by other people and you're going to go grab them and use them in your class, then that's fine. And uh, you don't need to know anything about HTML and CSS. You can just use Design View and Dreamweaver. It will work fine and you'll be publishing the forms and you'll be getting your content out there. But if you want to go uh, to where we're maybe up to Dreamweaver CS 5.5 and uh, you're starting to put user interactivity activity in your pages, then uh, you might uh, want to like, read up a little bit on HTML and uh, cascading style sheets. Okay, next slide. I think I have. Uh, okay, so there's my there's my interim. Now I don't think I tweeted that. Let me just check. Uh, I did not tweet that page. That's kind of the interim design where uh, it looks good on your laptop, it looks good on your phone, but if you have a real uh, narrow phone, your navigation bar is scrunched. So I just took the page, put it on my my website, and uh, put it up there and looked at it on my phone and said, oh, okay, my, my uh, navigation bar is scrunched, it's overlapping. Will the students still use it? Some of them will. Some of them don't care or don't notice or they'll be fine with it and you can put your links in there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can go to the next page and there's my uh, Bitly address that I tweeted and that is where I took the um, the navigation, the horizontal navigation bar out and I uh, just have now a single column, but it's a single column website that has style associated with it. And if I'm going to look at that with you, then, uh, okay, so I'm actually, I'm looking at it on a desktop uh, while, uh, but if I, you look at it on your phone, it renders to your phone and of course you're going to put your a course registration number or your title of your class up on top, and then uh, you can you can use this page for uh, some your syllabus even, or uh, you can look use it for a learning module. Or and then at the bottom, you can copyright your material uh, so that uh, because it's going to be on the internet, and uh, so some people want to let other people know that the material is comp copyrighted. So you have that opportunity. It's really simple. It's not all black and white. It's gray, black and white, but uh, it renders well and it's got good contrast and uh, it fits on screen and it's a liquid layout and something to keep in mind. There are uh, you don't want to go get a uh, even a single column uh, website or web page to use that is fixed because it may not re uh, resize itself for depending upon the screen. And I, I don't know about. You guys, well, I'm I'm trying to stay ready for whatever comes out next. Whether uh, I mean, if you if you have an iPhone or an Android, then you're ready. But uh, there are a lot of other kinds of phones out there. There are slides, there are flips, and uh, a lot of the phones have browser on browsers on them. So I don't really know what device uh, students are going to be looking at my content on. Okay, so. Um, Third bullet on my current slide with two changes. I made it fit on my BlackBerry screen, and that's my default screen. It will easily fit on an iOS or, or a, pardon me, um, an iPhone or Android. iOS is uh, the operating system for iPhone or an Android, the Google Android. Uh, now you can grab this layout for your own page. Now let me just say something uh, about grabbing this layout for your own page. There's two takeaways from this webinar. The first takeaway is on, I'm going back to uh, my Twitter, the first takeaway is the five tweets down where that bit the address that is X5TKIH. That's the takeaway. You can open up that um, page and uh, in your browser you can go to uh, view source and copy that uh, source to the code view of your Dreamweaver, whatever Dreamweaver you, you're using, and then just click on on uh, design, and then you can see how the page looks. And then, uh, whether you want to be in design or you want to stay in code view, you can make changes to that page, upload it to your website, and use that page. So there's a starter page for you. Uh, I call mine syllabus. You can call yours whatever you like, but it's a starter page, and. Uh, and please feel free to use it. The other one is uh, okay. It's uh, the fourth 
uh, tweet down, and that's this address right here. And if you go to there, you can see it's a it's not just uh, black text on a white background, but it's got some styling. So it's a little bit more interesting for the students. And, hey, Terry, uh, this yes. is Michelle. I've got a couple comments. Do you want to talk uh, about okay. that? I've got a comment from Ricardo. He says, this right. sounds like web design before the days of CSS. I'm not. Right, right. Oh, do you want to read okay. that? No. no, Ricardo, this sounds like web design before the days of CSS. Uh, that, that's absolutely right. For, uh, for the beginning uh, file, that's uh, web design for the days of CSS, but it's uh, publishing to phones. So publishing to phones is uh, not before the uh, the CSS, but I'm not sure most likely have time to do web design. Absolutely right, and that's why I'm trying to keep it simple. And I'm also trying to use pages that you didn't design. You just went and got the page off the internet since they're free to use, and uh, you can make changes. And of course, you're not going to convert your whole course or all of your course materials to this, but having something like a syllabus or having something that's uh, like a page, one page or two pages that shows up on student phones, I think it, it uh, adds a little bit of uh, authentic, authentication to your, con your course material for students. It's uh, a little bit different, uh, different experience for the students and uh, might just spruce up your course a little bit. How about Moodle and Blackboard display fine on mobiles with a few exceptions? That's, that's right, and require no coding. Absolutely right. But um, one of the things that um, I was talking to Michelle about before we got going on the webinar was this is for public facing websites where students may not already be on your uh, course management system, whether it's uh, Blackboard or Moodle. So yes, they publish fine, but you need content out there or you might be wanting to make contact with, contact with students before they actually got their account straight. Straighten out. And you have students that show up to class late. I know we do. And uh, so they're late. Uh, maybe they're in the system uh, not, not all the way through the system yet, or they came in late, something went wrong, they're not in the system uh, right, and so they're not able to access the court, uh, content management system. And so you want to have some pages where they can get going and they can uh, keep up with the class while they're getting their material uh, ready. Okay, so yes, thank you uh, for that. Do we have any more comments, Michelle? Well, it looks like CM said, I wonder if this would be uh, advantageous for those that still create their own web pages. Yeah, right. So, okay. right. That, that's exactly right. And there are some people that do create their own web pages, and there are people that only use uh, Moodle or uh, Blackboard. But I, I do it both. And that's, so that's why we're talking. But Ricardo is absolutely right. So thank you very much for that comment. Let me see. Uh, okay, I'm not going to show people. If you're not familiar with this, uh, this, these uh, concepts of grabbing the page, I'm going to try to do that right now. Okay, so getting the page code real quick. Uh, you browse to the website, and uh, you're going with your browser. You're going to use tools or uh, where whatever option you have to use with your specific browser to go look for the source code for the page. Then you do a select all, get your content, and uh, open up a new page in Dreamweaver, and make sure it's in code view, and then you can post uh, your, um, or <clears throat> maybe what I should say is paste the, your, from your clipboard into that page, and then um, click on your design view and look uh, at the way your page looks, make sure that you you got your copy done right. So yes, that's um, this is where you're using somebody else's design, uh, somebody else's design, and you're uh, going uh, to use that in your own class. You can if there if you have no cascading style sheets or no design of any kind, then you don't need to worry about design, colors, or anything like that. But if you are going to use the single column liquid web page, then uh, maybe you want to change your uh, background, or maybe you want to change your um, uh, top bar so that it's not black. Okay, um, 
So did everybody get that? You're going to browse to the web page. You're going to use your browser to get the source code, copy it to the clipboard, open up a new page in Dreamweaver, and make sure your set is uh, your set to the code view, and then paste from the clipboard. And then uh, you're going to look at it in design view. And don't forget to rename your page for your own website. And then you can make modifications. And you can do that with the, the two takeaways. The, uh, the uh, first page and the second page that I'm showing. Uh, here's another one. Project 7. And Project 7 is a great uh, is a great site. Okay, that's my opinion. I shouldn't be saying uh, I'm not I don't work for Project 7. I'm I'm not trying to sell Project 7 layouts, but they work with Dreamweaver and this is uh, say the next level of sophistication where you can go to Project 7 but no, you're going to have to purchase one of these layouts. So you go to Project 7, and uh, you put this layout into Dreamweaver, and then you can create pages with it. Why do I like Luna? So if you decide that later you want to go to Project 7 and look for Luna, why do I like Luna? It's a single page website. So before we talked about pages, web pages that with no styling, and they were old-fashioned before CSS, the next thing we talked about was web pages that have some styling, maybe they have some CSS, and uh, they're single column, real simple, and they're easy to use. But here, now you're getting closer to state of the art, where you're going to go get a website and put it in, uh, use it for your class. And some people do this. And, now, and not everybody does it, because lots of people have access to uh, Blackboard, or lots of people have access to Moodle, but not everybody does. Not everybody is fortunate to have a, a content management system um, at their school, or they don't have access to a content management system, and they might be using pages. And so here is a way where you can get something a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, what about a single page website? If you click on a link in a single page website, it's like the old days, or even uh, today, if you're using an Excel document and you have a link in an Excel document, it's a an href, it's a link path that goes to a target somewhere else in the in the document. And so this is the kind of thing where you have to decide: do you really want to go go this way? Uh, but if you do, or and if you want to look at Luna, and uh, there are other websites out there, Project Seven is um, it's. It's interesting to go there and to look around and see what other people are doing. And a lot of their layouts work well for uh, phones. They're not all phones, and so um, you're going to have some downside there. Um, not only are the layouts more expensive, but they're complex. And so if you have a student come in with a very simple phone, that student might uh, have questions about how to use your uh, content. I've got to move ahead here because I'm falling behind. Shortening addresses. If you're not familiar with shortening addresses, so you can use you can everybody uh, everybody in the in the session can go set up a Twitter account and uh, tweet files to students. Now the files I found need to be public facing on a public facing website. But you go. Um, I'm just going to speak it here. I use Bitly. It's not the only one. You can use tiny URL. And there are other services out there, but basically what you do is you take your long website. So here's my website for one of my pages, and I just uh, cut and paste, or I type or key that in to the window on Bitly, and uh, click shorten, and then I get a new address, and I grab that address, and I can tweet it like I tweeted to you guys uh, for this session. So it's really simple, and it's a lot easier to tweet the Bitly address or the tiny URL address than it is to uh, tweet the whole uh, path uh, for a web page. Okay, moving right along, how things are how are things changing? Um, we we are uh, we are in a situation right now where we have uh, teachers that are just learning to publish to phones, and they have legacy content. But if you're coming new, and uh, you don't have the issue with legacy content, and you already know uh, what how you want to publish your material. This is a new there, there's a new consideration, and uh, that is uh, there's a they look um, the the old designs that we have look old 
in terms of web pages, but they that we're talking about rendering on mobile mobile phones. Still, if you're using Dreamweaver CS 5.5 and you're using jQuery, and we, we will talk about jQuery in a second, if you're using that, it has a the the mobile look has a brand new look. And uh, I think I this is my last tweet. It's at the top of my Twitter page. It's that uh, if you click on that, you'll see. Uh, it's a, if you're on your phone, you can see that looks like a web site that shows up on a mobile phone. So you, this is within our reach using Dreamweaver 5 or, C, or CS 5.5. Actually, I kind of lied because you can, do, you can do Dreamweaver CS 4 and you can still go get the tools that you need from the Internet and put them in Dreamweaver, but at, they're already built in in CS 5.5. So uh, that's that new look. If you if you're looking at that page and you click on uh, the button, go down to the bottom where it says using accordion and click on that. You'll see there's a uh, jQuery widget there where you can have a single page and put uh, three different uh, uh, topics in that single page. So you can look around uh, on that tweet. What page? Rhonda B said what page? Um, let me see. Do I have that? Let me see if I can go ahead here, and uh, I'll go back. Uh, it's uh, if you you have to look on my Twitter feed, and it's at the it's the last uh, link on my Twitter feed. So that means it's at the top of the list. It's at the top of the list, and then you can see that there's a um, an uh, an accordion widget at the bottom. Okay, do we have a comment here? Zach, I tried the URL for Luna, but it did not work. I tried the following. Just go to project7.com. Zach, go to project7.com and uh, go to Luna. Uh, Michelle, do you yes. see this comment? I can't go back to the whiteboard and correct the URL. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll just put it in the... Um, Is she stuck? Or no. Oh, okay. All right, good. Well, they have, I didn't get typed in right. We'll, we'll get it. Um, okay. They can actually save your, your PowerPoint. So we'll get it. So I can't go back. That's part of the question. Okay. The layoffs that we discussed so far rendered to multiple devices and published content, content from mobile devices. Uh, so, but they don't look like uh, other mobile or websites that show up on mobile phones. So, uh, is it that is it that big of a deal? In some cases, it will be. Some some students are going to say, "Listen, you know, that doesn't look like the other websites that I use on my mobile phone." So you just have to address that. That you know, you have some legacy content. Some of it is going to look like uh, exactly like a mobile phone website. Others not, and uh, that's the way it is. There's no, there's nothing uh, there's nothing wrong with having quality content in your class that you're going to use uh, over and over, and students uh, just need to get it uh, uh, either if they can't, if they're not happy about looking at it on their phone, go get a tablet, go get a laptop, go to the library, use a desktop. And that's really the value in all of our materials here is that uh, you can use all these materials on the, the different access devices that uh, you have. I'm trying to not run out of time. Here. So here's my HTML5 and CSS3 uh, uh, slide. Those are uh, new standards. They're HTML5, again, it's hypertext markup language if you're new to this, or cascading style sheets for CSS if you're new to this. 5 is the latest and the greatest, and C is, uh, 3, pardon me, 3 is the latest and the greatest. So, so much latest and the greatest that uh, in the case of HTML5, it's still in development. It's not completed yet, and uh, there's not necessarily uniform support for CSS3. So uh, something to keep in mind if, like, in the beginning there, we were talking about designing for WebKit browsers. If you design for those browsers, you're going to have your best support for these new technologies. And uh, when you get to Dreamweaver CS5.5 and you use those technologies, then uh, your your students are going to have the best uh, experience with your content. jQuery also part of uh, CS 5.5, but whether you have CS 3, 4, 
five or five point five, you can always go get jQuery and uh, put incorporate it into your pages. So uh, if you go to jQuery uh, dot com or uh, jQuery mobile, the jQuery mobile page, then you can um, get a download, or you can use a content distribution network and uh, get jQuery in your pages, even if you don't have CS five point five. It's easy to get lost with all the letters, so I try not to have too many letters, but I thought I should put that stuff in there. Media queries. What are your media queries? This is something that uh, when you get to, you want to have your your pages look like a, a page that belongs on a mobile phone, or you want to have your website look like a page that belongs on a mobile phone. Here is something that instructors can do. Media queries use style sheets, cascading style sheets, to target specific screen sizes and layout. So we're not going to learn media queries here, but we're going to just hear about it. And you can uh, you can uh, query this, or you can search for this on your desktop. Um, search for media queries and, and get some training materials on it. But I did put a, uh, an actual media query um, at the third bullet down here. You can see it looks, looks like code because it is, but you can see that Media queries target a screen, and by the way, it also is saying there should be a color screen. I know we don't normally think about this, but HTML and CSS are not only used on for web browsers. There are other devices that they're used on. So here, whereas you probably have never seen a phone that's black and white, there are screens out there that are black and white. And so uh, HTML5 and or HTML and CSS. Both have to be um, able to uh, use uh, render to those screens too. Um, what does it really mean? Adding some simple materials to your class for students to access on phones and pads does not have to be rocket science. Now, uh, some people are ready for rocket science, and some people want it to be rocket science, but not everybody uh, has to have it be rocket science. So you have that. That you have the lower road that you can take, and you can still get some of your content out there. And uh, I just have to go back to what Ricardo said. Uh, he was absolutely right. If you're using a content management system, then you can design pages in your content management system that will render on phones. But I do Dreamweaver training. I mean, pardon me. I do um, Blackboard training, and I try to convince my instructors instead of using the uh, the calendar. In Blackboard, use put dates in your um, your announcements because then it renders as a list. And so, if you have the student that's accessing through a web a web browser to your Blackboard course and loads your announcements, they see a list and they see dates, and that means it's easier to use. But you're also going to have the students that don't need you to help them; just put it up there, and they can go find it and use it. So everybody has a, a wide range of students. For web materials that are sent to student phones that require private information, this is more like grades. Okay, so we're talking about grades, and a lot of people have native apps at their district or at their college right now that are showing student grades. That's really more the uh, area of uh, campus computing where they're on the back end, they've got security, and they're making native apps. That's not so much, although there will be some instructors that are. Uh, creating uh, native apps for their classes. Most of us are going to be sticking with simple web apps, and uh, it's going to work just fine. Uh, for instructors who are SMEs or subject matter experts in other areas, simple web apps are going to do the trick. Okay, I'm trying to get through this so I can. I got. Um, oh, there's my mobile link, uh, link. Look, pardon me. My mobile look link. And there's a Bitly link, and still, but it's on Twitter also, so you can uh, key it in, or you can go there, and it's got the mobile look for the um, for your browser view on whatever device you're using. Now, uh, I've had people look at this page and go, "Oh, this isn't right because it doesn't have a behavior like a mobile phone, or it's using something that's legacy." Uh, and you're absolutely right, and I'm still thinking about instructors that are using legacy materials. But think, look at my bullet number four. It's a start, right? And we all have to get started somewhere. In the very beginning, we said how many people are publishing the phones. Fewer people are publishing the phones than not, 
and uh, you don't want it, you don't want this to be overwhelming. And we have to have some tools for using legacy content and then getting our stuff on the phones for students. Um, my uh, my layout that is kind of a mix. It's a hybrid solution. I've got uh, page views. I've used other tools um, like for an RSS feed in there and. Uh, I've, uh, I have a website that's a single column. It happens to be one of the pages that came from Project 7, and uh, it doesn't fit perfectly, and it, it doesn't look like the mobile phone layout, but people can still use it, and people do. Why hybrid? I use this term since legacy content. Not all of the content has the mobile look, only the index page. That's why I'm calling it hybrid. And this approach allows instructors to adapt existing class materials to be used with a mobile site. Let me see what I've got going. Dreamweaver did not stop there, and uh, we didn't, we, I never really planned on um, covering PhoneGap, but PhoneGap is a tool that's in Dreamweaver CS5 right now, CS5.5 right now, where an instructor could use this tool to uh, create a uh, native web app. So that's, that's beyond our uh, webinar and, and um, most of us are not going to do that, but it's there if you want to go get uh, get on and uh, use Dreamweaver CS5.5. Dreamweaver is set up for instructors to publish to the Android operating system. Why do I say that? Um, you can publish to iPhone using Dreamweaver CS5.5, but it's a little bit more complex to get it set up. Uh, Android operating system is straightforward. It's already there. It's a done deal. So you know you get Dreamweaver CS5.5 and start using their tools, and you're going to be out there uh, where uh, you're going to be on, on the Android operating system, and uh, you're going to be doing the most modern stuff of, um, that's being done. Here are some resources. Why are these resources? In addition to my Twitter uh, feed, why are these resources? Because they're made by Adobe, and you can go there, and it's both TV to watch and uh, pages to read. So. I go to these all the time and uh, uh, read stuff and uh, try to keep up and try to remind myself and uh, learn something new. So uh, anyway, I, I love uh, the, uh, the Adobe stuff is, is out there and it's uh, really high quality and it's free for instructors. So I think that that is the end. And uh, Michelle, what should we do? Well, do you want people can actually, you know, put into the chat area if they have any comments or questions. Sure. Yeah. Or uh, we want to uh, do any questions that haven't been um, already addressed. Uh, Paige, thank you very much for this uh, mention of soft chalk. Uh, that's, I didn't know that. And so I'm, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and that automatic part, that's, that's the good news. So a lot, a lot of instructors are going to want to uh, just create pages inside their content management system. Uh, can somebody tell me if SoftChalk works in uh, Moodle? I don't. I don't. I know it works in Blackboard. Yes. Okay. So SoftChalk, whether you're on Moodle content management system or course management system, or you're on Blackboard, you're you're good to go there. And uh, uh, I'm not sure about the publishers. And thank you very much, Francine. I appreciate your good stuff. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, a lot of people have been very nice and posted things, and yeah. a great yeah, sharing you. crowd, Carrie. Right. I, I really appreciate uh, um, you guys coming today, because I, some of this is new, and uh, we, like I said, we've got the wide range, so some people are, are way past me, and some people don't have a phone yet, so I try to hit the middle, and, uh, and hopefully somebody got, everybody got something. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, uh, we've got a um, we have a uh, survey monkey. It's, uh, I'm going to send out right now that if you'll give us some feedback on that, and you know, Terry, we just want to thank you. A lot of great information and um, very very nice. Okay. Thank you very much. It was great to have. Um, thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Give you a round of applause. Big virtual round of applause. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.